We ask for the living water tonight uh, to come forth in Jesus' name. Lord, we are hungry and we're thirsty for you. And you said that you would fill us up. And so we give this time to you. All the glory comes to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. The title of the message today is Operating in the Grace of God. Operating in God's grace. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just use a simple definition of uh, grace to be God's favor. So when he shines his face upon you when he turns his and, and begins to look upon you he looks upon you with with a favor or grace and that's really important but it's so much more than that uh it's also uh the holy spirit is called the spirit of grace in zechariah and in hebrews 10 29 the holy spirit is called the spirit of grace and we know from acts 10 verse 38 that he is the power of God mm -hmm. so grace is also the power of God and it's the operational power of God now I know that we all know about grace and so I could easily say well we know about grace so there's nothing to consider we we just know about grace but it's important to remember and to remind ourselves of how important grace is and find out how we can activate it because it's mm -hmm. easy to live in this life and know about grace but not activate grace yeah, well, that's the truth and so this message is about let's keep grace active in our life in every aspect of life we could uh, know all about grace and not apply it in our marriage we could know all about grace and not apply it with our relationships with our children uh, or with uh, other family members. We could know about grace, but yet not apply it in our workplace. We mm. could know about grace and not apply it in the marketplace. And so uh, we, we need not only to know about grace, but know how to operate it, how to activate it. Um, I was talking with my daughter this uh, past weekend, um, our daughter, Amy Elizabeth, and, and she was saying that she had been a nurse for 20 years, and much of that time she had been a nurse in the emergency room, and so that was a very high pressure uh, position, always uh, uh, things to do and, and to uh, deal with uh, medical and health issues and, and uh and she had grace for it for, for years, but then she said her grace ran out. And, it lifted and, off of her. And she had uh, moved into another area, and, and the area she moved into was being a flight attendant, and I know that I've, I've mentioned this before, but, but I want you to know that she started with a lower salary. When she was working uh, in emergency room and making a very good salary as a nurse, but then uh, took a job, uh, a career change in a flight, to be a flight attendant for American Airlines mm -hmm. and uh, worked for a lot less money for a few years. But now her salary has begun to mm -hmm. increase. And she was telling us this weekend that she actually has uh, an opportunity to make uh, more money uh, with the airlines than she could in nursing. Uh, and, but but there was definitely a time uh, that we might have asked, well, why why make a, such a switch mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, such a reduction in salary? But but she was explaining it again this weekend, as she has before, that the grace ran out uh, to work at those twelve-hour shifts in the emergency room. There's just a lot of pressure mm -hmm. to do that, and she didn't have uh, grace to do it anymore. So the decision. Uh, you know, as she was talking about, was about grace, and I, Amen. and it caused me to wonder. Well, are we operating in grace in every aspect of our life? Because if you get out of grace, mm -hmm. uh, if you get out of grace, then you're doing it in your own, own work, strength, in your own strength, your own intellect, and you don't have the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit operating in your life. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. Then, how can yeah. we get 
that uh, supernatural power operating in every area of our lives, Sherry. You know, I just, uh, that, <clears throat> that word supernatural is, it takes you beyond what you could do yourself. And, and when he said supernatural, that's what, that's what grace is, is that supernatural power of God uh, that helps us go beyond ourself and do more for the kingdom, uh, to live a better life, and to be productive uh, in what we do. See, I like to look at grace as grace begins when our ability ends. So beyond our ability, that we do all of this up to this point, but beyond that, we've got mm -hmm. more to do. And so we need grace to kick in. So mm -hmm. grace uh, operates beyond our own ability. And so it begins where our ability ends. We lay it down and say, mm -hmm. well, we cannot do it. We're going to depend on God. And we need to do it in every aspect of our life. That's in right. Our marriage, That's right. With our family, with our, uh, on our job, our career, and uh, maybe even changing careers. And one thing about grace, it's God's ability to do his will. Uh, it's, it's not uh, his ability to do just any kind of thing that we wish for, but it's, uh, so we have to find out where our, uh, purpose is uh, that God has for us. So it's his ability to do his will, his power operating in us and through us by the Holy Spirit to do uh, his will. And so for us to activate the grace of God in our life, in any area of life, we have to be following the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about where is the Spirit leading? And so on the job, uh, what what do we need to do? So as we go on the job each day, we need to be seeking the Amen. Holy Spirit. I think about a woman who who's uh, the boss came in uh, on on Monday and gave her this big assignment and said, "Well, work on this. Don't work on anything else. This is the most important thing." And uh, and but the Holy Spirit said, "Don't work on that. Work on these other things. These are the important things." And, and so. Every day she'd want to work on the thing the boss gave her on Monday. And then on Friday, but the Holy Spirit kept guiding her mm -hmm. in a different direction every day. And, and she, she accomplished a lot that week. And on Friday, the boss came to her and said, well, uh, the client we had for that project uh, has changed uh, her mind and she doesn't want that project. So what I told you on Monday, uh, no longer... Is there a need for us to yeah, do that? It's not and even important. It, it, we, we, there's no reason to do it. And, and so if she had relied on what the boss told her and not what the Holy Spirit told her inside, work on these other projects. These are important. These are the things that you need to get out this week. And that's the way we need to be operating. Mm -hmm. uh, there's pressures. See, there's always <clears> pressures. <throat> People have a lot of demands, put demands on you and say, you need to be doing this. You need to be doing that. And there's not enough hours in the day to do everything that people want you to do. But you have to find out what is important by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's where you have grace. See, if, if you're not following the Holy Spirit, you're not operating in grace. But if you can operate in grace, you do that by following the Holy Spirit. So there's some points I want to make. There's really uh, four basic points I want to make tonight. And the first one is about works, grace, the distinguishing yeah, between, between grace, grace and, and works. works. You know, uh, Romans 11, um, I, I forget, Romans 11 says that if it's, if it's by works, then grace is not grace. Mm. Grace is grace, but it's not works. And so I want to share to read this uh, verse in 2 Timothy. Okay. 2 Timothy 1, 9, out of the New American Standard, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, it's a grant. Yeah. yeah and it came from Jesus. And, and it's by Jesus Christ. And so we operate in grace. But also, you see, there's we're saved by for purpose and grace. Amen. 
purpose and grace. And so we need to be finding out what is God's purpose. Now, when we're operating in God's purpose, we're going to have the grace to do it. And what God has for you is bigger than you can do on your own. Hallelujah. You might say, oh, but I'm, I'm uh, really strong and I'm really mm. smart and I can do all of this. But God has bigger plans for you than what you can do on your own. He wants to partner with you. He wants you to operate in his grace. Uh, and his grace kicks in where your ability ends. This so, is not according to our works. Not our works, but according to his purpose and his grace. And so we need to remember that grace is not about works. It's not about what we earn, things that we earn. Well, we want this based on our ability and based on what all we have done and what we've earned. No, it's grace. It's free. It's free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the first thing we need to distinguish, and it, it's really important for us to understand how grace operates. It's not by works, but it's by mm -hmm. what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. It says mm -hmm. in Ephesians 2, verse 8, we are saved by, by grace, grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Saved by grace through faith. So if it's going to be by grace, it's got to have faith attached to it. And so you can say, I know all about grace, but are you applying faith to it? Are you applying faith in your workplace? Mm -hmm. Are you applying faith in your family mm -hmm. situation? I uh, see so you've got to put that faith with grace in order for it to operate. So the first thing we need to distinguish that Grace is different than works. We need to distinguish the difference between grace and works. It's so easy to get it and worked up all in an uproar uh, because people are putting demands on us. Our children are putting demands. Our spouse are putting demands. Our, our extended family putting demands. Our, our boss uh, uh, the marketplace, everything's putting demands on mm -hmm. us. And it's better just to step back from that and find out what is the Holy Spirit have yeah, for us. Amen. I really like that story about that woman that her boss really put her under pressure yeah. to, to do this big project, which by Friday, it didn't even exist anymore. Yeah. There's no demand, no need for that project. And if she had uh, spent all of that week working on a project that was going to uh, go away, then she would have wasted her time and she'd still have all these other projects to accomplish. But no, mm -hmm. she was effective that week because she worked on what the Holy Spirit told her and what not what man was telling her to do. And then that's when the grace came. That's when the grace came to her. Okay, the second thing we need to distinguish uh, between grace and the law, uh, because grace is different than the law. Amen. See, uh, under the Old Testament, there was only the law, uh, but under the New Testament, it's Jesus Christ and grace is the grace that he provides. So I want you to read this verse in John 1, 17. Okay, also it's out of the New American Standard. John 1, 17. For the law was given through Moses, Grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. Okay. Grace and truth. Hallelujah. They came by Jesus Christ. So under the Old Testament in the book of Leviticus, we see what the law is. We see all of the commandments mm -hmm. of the law. And, and so sometimes we want to get involved in keeping commandments and keeping laws. And uh, the thing about the law, you have to come keep all of the law you cannot keep 90 percent of the law and be righteous mm -hmm. see there mm -hmm. is a righteousness that comes through keeping the commandments and keeping the requirements of the law but everybody has sinned and the only person who kept the law was jesus christ amen only he could do it so it was a it was a righteous law and it really, the purpose of the law was not to make us righteous, not you and me to be righteous by the law, but the law was to show us where our sin was mm. because everybody has sinned 
who and can come come short of, of the glory, glory of God. God. And, and so the law is just to show us what we can't do, where we're, we'd be sinful, and where we need Jesus Christ. But grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. So we need to distinguish then the difference between grace and the law. And we couldn't keep the law. And, and, and we might think, well, I can keep these uh, commandments. I can keep these, and I can be true to these commandments but and these requirements. But if you keep 99% of the law and not 100%, then it's like you have broken the whole, the whole law. So it's not anything that we can do on our own, keeping the law. We have to turn to grace and it's by grace through faith. And so we have to put our uh, faith to it. And that's the reason a lot of people know about grace, but they don't operate in it uh, because they think that they're okay because they're doing these good things. They're mm -hmm. doing the things that, that a, a good law uh, abiding uh, person would do. They're doing those good things, but it's not by the law. We have to remember it's, it's by grace, grace through, through faith. faith. So we need to distinguish then uh, that it's it's not by grace. I mean, not by the law, but it's by grace. Now, the third thing to distinguish, see, uh, uh, this is the third thing. The first thing was distinguish between, between grace, grace and, and works. works, then grace and law. Now we're going to distinguish between uh, grace and judgment, uh, justice, uh, justice. See, God is a just God. Amen. Amen. And, and, and one of the things I've been thinking about this week is that I've heard so many people say that uh, if God is a loving God, he will not send me to hell uh, where the devil is. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what they think. There mm -hmm. are so many people they get on this idea that God, if God is a loving God, he will not send a, a pretty good person to hell, to be with the devil. But see, you don't know this. If you're thinking in those terms, you don't know that he's a just God. Amen. Oh, because that, that would throw him. And, and you'll encounter some people that think like that. Mm -hmm. And they think, well, God is not going to punish me. But you know, Exodus 34, 7 says, God is merciful, he's compassionate, he, he's faithful, but he does not leave the guilty unpunished. Uh, so that you've got that little, mm -hmm. you've got that little warning at the end. It begins with, oh, God is merciful. God is compassionate. God is faithful. God, you know, God is wonderful. But then you put in this little warm, warning at the end, but God does not leave the guilty unpunished. And so many people think that God will not punish their sin because he's a loving God. But see, let's don't get that confused. Let's don't get him being a loving God confused and forget that he is a judge, Yeah, that he is going to operate in justice and he will not leave the guilty unpunished. So there's a lot of people that are deceived. They have deceived themselves. And, and I know a lot of people have said this. And, and even around me, yeah, they've said it, that, oh, if he's a loving God, he'll not send me to yeah. hell. But there were sinners. <laughs> and, and the guilty will not be unpunished. Ooh, and so yeah. I want to look at this verse that I've, Ask Sherry to read. It comes from the Amplified uh, Translation. It's in Isaiah 45, <clears throat> verse 21. There is no other God besides me, a consistently and uncompromisingly just and righteous God and a Savior. There is none except me. Okay, so we have on the two hands, on the one hand, He's a just God, and that means he's going to judge. He's going to judge people according right. to the, what they've done. On the other hand, he is a savior, and by the savior, he gives grace. And, and so mm. both of these are out there. It's like a two-edged sword. Mm. Uh, if you don't receive grace, you're going to be judged. And, and if you're a sinner, 
uh, and you don't receive grace, you will be judged. Oh. There, there's no alternative. It's it's either receiving Jesus Christ and his grace in every aspect of your life. Uh, and so don't go along in, in one aspect of your life. Well, when I go to uh, my church on Sunday, then I'm going to receive grace there. But mm -hmm. on the workplace, I'm not going to. Or in the, my family situation, right. I'm not going to receive grace. No, you need to operate by faith and ask the Lord for grace in every situation. Amen. So you'll Amen. have wisdom beyond your natural intellect. You'll have strength beyond your natural strength when you're asking for grace and being led by the Spirit because the Spirit is the Spirit of grace and he's also the power of God. And so there's really three distinctions Then now that I've talked about and we need to remember and keep these things in mind see it's one thing to know about grace but it's another thing to understand mm -hmm. it and that's the purpose of this message today and activate it is to understand it and activate it and so i understand there's a distinction between grace and works a distinction between grace and law a distinction between grace and judgment and so we've got to be uh, we've got to be operating in grace in all of those areas and don't let all those things uh, become blurred. The lines are clearly drawn in the Bible. The Bible Amen. is consistent all the way from the beginning to the ending. Now, there uh, I just want to I just want to to make this comment. Remember when 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 I gave our the testimony uh, when we went to Moravian Falls. And the Lord showed me in into heaven. He showed me what was going on. And that that throne room is is real. And the the fire of God is real. And the the works that that we might think are important, uh, that people are asking us to do, they seem to be good works. And but if their carnal works, I saw the fire. I saw it. I will never forget it, that that fire is there and, and it will be burned up in a, in a twinkling of an eye. Uh, they would speak it out of their mouth. And if it was not uh, the, the works of God, eternal works, it was burned up. And, and so it says that the wages of sin uh, is death, but we can operate in grace. And so this message tonight, I feel like is the, the, the topic area of grace. I told Brother Fred this earlier today is a very controversial um, topic area. And people have been taught many things that are that are not according to the truth okay. but it's important for us to understand it this, this message is to help us remember bring to our uh pure thinking about the grace how important it is and so that we can do a test in our life and am i operating in mm -hmm. test in my marriage am i operating in by grace am i operating by grace in my marriage am i operating by grace in my relationships with my family? Am I operating by grace uh, in my uh, family life, in my home life? Am I operating by grace in my career? Am I operating by grace in the marketplace when I'm buying and selling things? And in the ministry. And activate it, activate grace. And we're gonna be talking more about that in a moment. But the fourth point I want to make is that there's only one basis for grace, and that is the finished work of the cross. Mm. Only the finished work of the cross. Well, I'll ask Sherry to read a verse about it in a moment, mm. but I just want to say, okay, let's think about the finished work of the cross. You know, there were some people that were forgiven for sin, mm. uh, even in the Old Testament. And, and we know David, for example, sinned. Mm -hmm. uh, and... and well, in reality, everybody in the Old Testament sinned. Mm, that's right. But God forgave them. But the only basis, really, he had to forgive people 
was because Jesus went to the cross. Now, on the cross, we know this from Isaiah 53, he was wounded, wounded for our, our transgressions. transgressions. He was bruised, bruised for, for our, our iniquities. iniquities. The chastisement of our peace, peace was, was upon him. him, and by his stripes we're healed. So Isaiah saw into the spiritual realm. He saw things that Matthew, Mark, uh, and, and those guys, the disciples, didn't see. He saw what was really happening on the cross, that Jesus all of the sin was put on Jesus. Mm -hmm. All of the sin of mankind in all generations mm -hmm. was put on Jesus. And by his stripes we were healed. By you. his punishment, we have peace. See, grace yeah. gives you peace. So you if you look at your life. If you're is your marriage, you have peace in your marriage. You have peace in your relationships with your children and with your parents and with your siblings. Do you have peace? If you don't, you're not operating in grace because grace will produce peace. See, there mm -hmm. was the, his punishment. What Jesus, uh, when he was punished on the cross, it brought us peace. And so if you don't, if you don't have peace in an area of your life, if you don't have peace in your marriage, if you don't have peace in your uh, dealings with your family, if you don't have peace with your uh, and your job. If you don't have peace, this is a way to measure. Am I operating in grace? Mm -hmm. are, are you? Do you have peace in the marketplace when you're buying things and selling? If you don't, you don't have grace because peace is the end result of grace. Mm, By me. his punishment, we have peace. Amen. You see that? So you, that's the way you measure. Do I have grace? Do I have peace? in my career? Do I have peace in my job? If you don't have peace there, you're not functioning in grace. Ooh, because hallelujah. if you have grace, uh, then you'll be functioning in peace. You'll have the ability to do it. You'll have the, the, the understanding and the wherewithal to do what needs to be do, done. You'll be at peace. Then that that's a clear indication you're operating in God's grace. Amen. So follow the Holy Spirit and, and, and you'll have that uh, peace. But see, here's the issue. The only basis uh, for forgiveness of sin is the work of the cross. We've all sinned and, and we have forgiveness of sin by what Jesus did. We have healing by what Jesus did on the cross. Mm -hmm. We have peace by what Jesus did on the cross. Mm -hmm. So we have forgiveness of sin. So the question then I want to ask you, how was God able to forgive people like David, like Moses, like Solomon, like, like, like Abraham, Abraham, like uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah and Daniel. How was he able to forgive? Because that happened before Jesus went to the cross, but God could forgive them in times past. In the Old uh, Testament, when they were living, he forgave them of their sins. How was he able to do it? Because Jesus Christ was slain uh, from, from the, the foundation, foundation of, of the world. world. So Jesus Christ was slain outside of time. Before God created the earth, mm, Jesus mm, Christ mm. has already slain. Yeah, it's good for So then when we go along in time, mm. see he was he was he was crucified outside of time, but then it did occur in time period about two thousand years ago. But mm. God could forgive because he knew that Christ had been slain outside of time. And, and so he brought that in. He, God could, is not limited by time. He knew what had happened even before he created this universe that Jesus Christ was crucified. And then it happened in a point in time. Mm -hmm. But he could forgive people even before he got to that because everything was pointing towards the cross. Throughout the Old Testament, everything was pointing towards the cross, and God knew, mm -hmm. and God knew that Christ was crucified, and he was crucified outside of time, but it happened in time, and, and so he could forgive people in the Old Testament, 
He can forgive us today, not because of what we do. And so our pardon, our healing, our peace, mm -hmm. our, all of that comes from the work of That's the right. cross. And so I want uh, Sherry to read this verse then that shows us the only basis for forgiveness of sin is about the work of the cross. And the only basis for grace then is the work of the cross. So let's, let's read this verse here. It's Romans 3, <laughs> verses 23 and 24 out of the New American Standard. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus. It's all a, a, it's a it's, gift yeah. of grace. It's a free gift of grace. It's nothing we do by works, uh, but it's a free gift and it's a grant. And so it, that work that Jesus did on the cross, I oh, mean, it did so much. Well, we cannot uh, even touch it in, in uh, uh, a lifetime, all that Jesus accomplished on the cross. But remember that this message has an application in your life. It has an application in every aspect of your life that you want grace operating there. So ask, ask for forgiveness when you, when you sin, uh, ask for forgiveness. That's what I do. And, mm -hmm. if, and if I offend Sherry, then I ask her for forgiveness and I ask God for mm -hmm. forgiveness. So receive forgiveness, but remember it's by the blood of Jesus. And so we have redemption by his blood shed mm -hmm. on the cross. And that's where we have grace then uh, through that redemption. And so we're saved by grace. It's a free gift and it is a gift and it's a grant uh, and, and through faith. So you have to apply faith. So you can't just say, I know about grace. And so I'm operating in grace. No, you have to ask the Lord to show you what you need to be doing. And it's when you're doing his purpose, then he, he's mm -hmm. going to give you his grace there. And, and that when that grace is functioning in your life, you're going to have strength. You're going to have peace. You're going to have healing. You're going to have contentment because the grace of God is operating in your life. Hallelujah. This is a message that you can apply Mm -hmm. day after day we Amen. need to Amen. be aware that we need grace in every aspect of our life if we're not applying grace in our life then we're struggling we're we're mm -hmm. in chaos mm -hmm. we're we're in discontent that's right if we're not applying grace but when we apply grace it's like applying applying grease uh to some mm -hmm. to uh a uh, machine more things begin to operate smoothly so apply grace uh, apply mm -hmm. grease to your machine and, and you'll begin to operate smoothly and you'll have peace and joy and the and all the gifts of the holy spirit because it's the gifts of the holy spirit then the fruit of the holy spirit all of those things begin to operate when you're operating in the realm of grace Praise, through faith Thank Hallelujah. you for being here today. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. It's a very, very powerful thing to have in our lives. And, and like the scriptures have said tonight, it all comes through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. You know, and even with King David, I just want to say something about King David. I know that he he did he did lots of things. Abraham, uh, the father of our faith, he he did lots of things. Um but they were quick to repent. They were quick to come before the Lord and, and ask for forgiveness. And, and like Freddie said, even, and that was beautiful revelation there that, that he, God is able to do that with the old Testament uh, individuals because of Jesus Christ being slain uh, as the lamb uh, before the foundation of the world. Uh, and so that's something that 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 was beautiful uh, tonight. This message is something that we can all take hold of. And I pray for each one of you that you will that you're operating in grace and whatever you're doing, if you're being a homemaker, if you're if you're working outside of the home, if you're um, if you're 
you know, what, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, George, in your work every single day, uh, I pray that grace will be upon you and that you will be operating through the spirit of God and doing what the spirit of God tells you to do. And then it will be productive. Uh, even our prosperity, even our abundance uh, comes from uh, the grace of God and um, getting up in the morning and being able to breathe and, and, and talk and walk and see and, and hear. All of those things come uh, through uh, what Jesus did on the cross for us and um, a sound mind. And now, you know, I speak a sound mind to all of us in Jesus name, that, that we have uh, a sound mind, that we operate um, without confusion and discouragement and, and um, frustration, discontent, I believe Freddie said, that we can operate in the grace of God and have that peace uh, that passes understanding. You know, and that's, that's what we all, that's what we need uh, each, each and every day. Uh, we all have different things to, to make decisions about and all different things that we're operating with and, and, um, and our lives are somewhat different for each one of us, but the grace of God is not different and the peace of God is not different. It's, uh, it's powerful. And, uh, and so we, we want, Brother Fred and I want to operate in grace. Amen. 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 We want to to stay in the perfect will of the Lord, and uh, and we want to have that peace come upon us, and um, and not be frustrated or discontented or depressed or um, overwhelmed. Uh, you know that's what the enemy wants wants uh, for a person. 